Yes, I think there is. You just have to um, look at the evidence of science to see that you know it's been punctuated by major revolutions at certain points in our understanding, and you know things like Newtonian physics, you know, have been overturned by relativity. Uh, we have quantum mechanics now, you know, with a completely different uh, set of implications for for how we think of the world. So. As a scientist, you know, you're always going to say that anything is open to new evidence or new theoretical developments um, supported by evidence. But, you know, that doesn't mean we shouldn't act on climate science. You know, the foundations of climate science are very well understood, have been well understood for many years, you know, first thought about and, and experimented on a hundred years ago or so. Um, and now we've got an increasingly sophisticated view of how the different components of the climate interact and how they might evolve in time. And, you know, we're using very complicated models to do that because we can't do experiments with the real world. But nevertheless, they embody, you know, the best that we, uh, best physics and chemistry that we know about and biology that we know about to explain uh, what's happening to the climate system and to project forward what might happen. So, you know, if you've got new facts, new evidence, new theories that suggest aspects of this description are wrong, yes, of course, you've got to, you've got to look at that, you've got to improve the science because the stakes are huge. But to deny it on the basis of no firm evidence and, you know, sort of rather um, incoherent scientific notions, you know, is, is, is wrong and I think is, is morally and ethically unjustified.